own. I, I work for DNVGL. Uh, the former name was well known, more well known than this name. It's Kima. So uh, I have quite some experience with cable technology, and it's a pleasure to present this uh, uh, webinar for you. Is the title Substitution of Lead Cheese by Laminated Coverings in High Voltage Cables. And it's about aluminum or copper, one of the two. Um, the table of contents gives an impression of what we uh, are going to do in the coming uh, half hour. First, an introduction to the subject. Then I will talk about different designs, about the international situation, about pros and cons of the laminate compared to the latches, and when you have the laminate, laminated covering, what are the differences between copper and aluminum, environmental aspects, and finally, evaluation and conclusions. The introduction first. Well, lead is a common material to protect the cable insulation against water ingress, but also to screen the cable electrically and to offer a conducting pass for circulating capacitive and short circuit currents. So it's a very important part of the cable. And traditionally, lead is used for many, many years. Lead is heavy, expensive, and last but not least, increasingly becoming controversial for environmental reasons. When lead is released to the uh, environment, it makes its way into air, solids, water, and it can come to adverse effects. Lead is poisonous for human beings. It is in, in gasoline, it is in paint, well, lead is already a forbidden material in the United States. I don't think Europe is that far, but I expect lead will become a forbidden material. And Seagray, I hope you're familiar with Seagray, issued a technical brochure in 2011. It was called Advanced Design of Metal Laminated Coverings, Recommendations, Tests, etc. Technical Brochure 446. And in that technical brochure, a lot of information, and I will use uh, partly information from this technical brochure. Well, again, Seagrade decided in 2011 to issue this. And the working group studied alternative solution for lead. And there are two, an aluminum laminated foil plus copper screen. And the other option, a copper laminated foil. And in the technical brochure, it is stated several times, aluminum is used, but copper can be used as well. So both, both materials can be used as a laminate. In this webinar, I will particularly pay attention to this laminated covering as an alternative, and in some countries for corrugated copper or aluminum sheets for high voltage and extra high voltage in particular. Let's first say a few words about the designs. Uh, there are three designs. The first one is called Combined Design CD. The mechanical water tightness and the electrical short circuit currents and the other ones I mentioned before are combined in one thick metal foil, copper or aluminum, coated and bonded to the outer sheets. So the main parts are XLPE insulation, semiconductive bedding, a thick metal foil, either welded or glued, that carries the full short circuit current, coated and bonded to the outer sheaths, usually high density 
polyethylene. Additional wires can eventually be added to match the short circuit current requirement if that requirement is not satisfied by the laminated covering itself. The other one, the other option is the so-called separate design. Mechanical electrical properties are separated in a coated thin metal, copper or aluminum foil, 0.2 millimeters, plus copper or aluminum wires. So here that the water tightness and the electrical functions are separated. And the main parts are XLP insulation, copper or aluminum wires, water, swelling tapes to block the screen area, coated laminated metal foil, for example, 0.2 millimeter aluminum, plus 0.05 millimeter coating on one side. And the oversheath is usually medium density or high density polyethylene. And there is a third design, they call it the separate semi conducted design, S, SCD. Mechanical and electrical properties are separated, again, uh, like the, the, the one before, using a thin metal foil, but now the, is a coating with a semiconductive material and copper wires. So it's rather the same as the one before. The only difference is that the coating is semiconductive. XLP insulation, round copper wires, non-swelling semiconductive tape, a thin lead or aluminum foil, 0.05 millimeter, with glue on one side, the inner side, the screen side, coated with typically 0.05 millimeter semiconductive plastic, and then finally an overshears, usually PVC. Well, that's to give you a very brief overview of the designs that exist and are being used, you can all read that in the technical brochure, for a couple of years. And this laminated covering will be the future. That will be replaced sooner or later completely by this design, I'm sure of that. Well, what is the international situation? It was decided when we prepared this, um, this presentation, we also have written a report on the issue, it was decided to contact a few actors that play traditionally an important role in producing cable and using cable. And then particularly the interest was focused on the copper components and to check their experiences. And we selected three parties well-known manufacturer, Prismian, and two utilities, BKW and Expo, both utilities in Switzerland. These two utilities had a special reason because Switzerland is using more copper, is more copper-minded than the average utility. So we were very much interested to hear their experience. Well, first uh, contact I had with Prismian, Netherlands. Prismian has a factory in Delft. And I approached these guys, I know them very well. And we exchanged some information. Well, the first thing they said was what I just said before, that many Swiss customers ask for copper laminated coverings more than, than others. And the explanation is probably that this is just a tradition, we use copper and we remain using it. In the total cable price, there's not much difference between cables with aluminum and with copper laminated coverings because the copper laminate is, is uh, thinner. It's a very minor thickness, 0.25 millimeter. And no additional copper wires are needed. A possible reason for selecting copper is fear for corrosion. Good adhesion of the laminate with the outer covering is very important to reduce the risk of corrosion. 
Another reason to select copper is probably related to the tradition of the particular utility. I said it before, some utilities have the tradition to use certain products. They have good experiences and they like to remain using it. And well, I don't need to explain that in this business, tradition is important because the lifetime of all the products is so long that you cannot change easily uh, one day to another product. You have to be sure that it's good for several, several decades. Well, it does not make much difference from a production technology point of view what material is being selected. That's what Pershman told me. And at present, that their experience, mainly aluminum laminated covering is used in Europe, at least. Well, let's go now to the utilities. The first one was Expo Utility in Switzerland. Expo used to use copper laminated covering, but the company changed some time ago from copper to aluminum laminated covering. And the small difference in price, that's not the main reason, because it refers to a very thin layer of material. But the company's strategy is to buy standard components, and copper is considered to be a specialty. That's what that utility told me. So the company didn't change for financial reasons, but they wanted to be in line with standard components. If the customer wants another material like copper, he is discouraged because of extra efforts in making new design, preparing production, testing, which will be costly. So not the material price, but the additional cost will keep him away from using copper. And that's what the guy from Oxpo at the end said to me, only those utilities that deliberately want copper, they will pursue and say to the manufacturer, well, nevertheless, we prefer copper above aluminum. Let's go to the other utility, BKW, also Switzerland. BKW uses copper laminated coverings because of fear for corrosion for aluminum coverings. And the price difference was one euro. That maybe it was, a, it was a, a joke, but nevertheless, the price difference was very, very, very small. For 110 kV, 500 square millimeter copper, uh, it was a, a minor difference. And he said, we, we buy it from a local manufacturer. But more or less, the same happened, what had happened with Axpo. BKW, was to me known as all copper, but also they just decided to start the transition period to change to aluminum. And although the person I talked to was of the opinion that copper had more to offer than aluminum, the decision was made by the company to change. And the considerations Previous to the change, I am particularly focused on dimensions, ducts, bending areas, but not on reliability and maintenance issues. So the change was made, and they were looking to a few issues, but that was not a, a concern. If we go to another material, we may receive problems, more corrosion, uh, well, other, other problems uh, mechanically. It was just decided. I was a little surprised because if you as a company change from one material to another, it is quite a change and you would expect that there is a, uh, a study how to solve all the problems that may arise. But utility obviously trusted all the workers and they said you will solve that problem. Well, let's come to the technical content of this presentation again. And let's say a few words about pros and cons of the laminated covering compared to lead. 
The application of the laminated coverings has the following pros and cons. First pro, less weight, lower in price, more environmental friendly than lead. That is what I said already, gradually becoming a forbidden material and a reduced radial diameter, so more lengths on the drum, less joints, because the cable has a smaller radius than the cable with lead. What is against? Well, aluminum, at least aluminum laminated coverings need additional copper wires to match short circuit, and it is less robust than lead, although the test I've seen uh, could successfully pass. So there is, there is it, it is true that lead is far more robust, but it doesn't seem a very critical point. What are the pros and cons of copper laminated coverings compared to aluminum? Well, when considering copper versus aluminum to be used for laminated coverings, the pros and cons are the following. The resistance against corrosion is far better for copper than for aluminum. That's well, well known. The other problem is that when copper corrodes, you get a thin layer of a conductive material as when aluminum corrodes, it is an insulating material. That's a major difference. But the degree of corrosion is much different. Copper hardly corrodes as aluminum is doing it very quickly. Second point, there is a higher stress fatigue endurance limit, so mechanical requirement. The design is simpler because you don't need additional wires when you have copper. Conductivity is so much better that you don't need it. And finally, easier soldering and welding. What are the cons? Well, it's gradually becoming a non-standardized solution. That was my, my conclusion from my talks with those two Swiss utilities. And finally, additional cost to discourage a non standardized solution. Everybody believes that when you ask for something that is not standardized, yes, you have to pay more. What can we say about the environmental aspects? Well, it's clear that the replacement of lead is considered to be a very positive action towards the environment. Lead is already called an environmental unfriendly material, to say it friendly, because it's, it's poison and it can stay in the environment for a very long time. And in some countries, the United States is, is a little ahead. It is already a forbidden material. Consequently, any appropriate replacement is most welcome. Well, what can we say about the evaluation and related conclusions of this presentation about laminated coverings, in particular using copper? Well, firstly, the laminated covering is replacing rapidly lead sheets or the corrugated sheets for the reasons I already mentioned. Lead is no longer available, so there is not, not much choice and it has a number of advantages. Secondly, the laminated covering is mainly consisting of aluminum. However, according to the Seagrade technical brochure 446, copper can be used as well. Copper has clear technical advantages above aluminum. Resistance against corrosion, a simpler design, higher fatigue limit, easier soldering. I could add smaller radial dimensions. And there's hardly a price difference. However, only a few utilities seem to use it. And utilities that want to use copper are more or less, I call it discouraged by manufacturers with the message that aluminum laminate is the standard solution and not the copper laminate. 
Although the manufacturer, what I said my, in my talk, this situation in Delft, that copper has advantages above aluminum. Utilities prefer, for strategic reasons, standard components, as this is supposed to be the most cost-effective long-term solution. And utility management considers the technical aspects related to a change from copper to aluminum to be solvable. So, but I said, the corrosion problems, mechanical problems, that can, they expect that these problems can be solved, and then they are in line with the long-term strategic standard solution. Finally, the long-term risk in relation to, for instance, corrosion problems is not acknowledged at this very moment as a serious problem. And this is particularly based on the experience so far, but that's, I wonder if that is enough. But that's the reality at the moment. Well, I come to my recommendations, and I hope you raise questions to me. We can discuss about this. The recommendations based on evaluating the situation of laminates and coming to the choice copper versus aluminum. Well, the first thing, the TSO is recommended to act like he is acting in case of selecting an insulating cable compound. I follow quite closely how these compound manufacturers operate. They, their customers are the cable manufacturers, but they also approach the end user and telling them what they are doing, what products they have, what the differences are, what the future is, etc. So they, what they do is informing these end users about what they are doing with the manufacturers. The compound manufacturer supplies to the cable manufacturer, but he also informs directly the end user about the different options for material use in cables. Well, based on the information provided by the compound industry directly to the TSO, the TSO decides ultimately what he wants. When I just give you my experience with the compound industry. I, I, I attended a few of these sessions where the compound manufacturer informs the end user what he's doing. He has three retardants, for instance, three retardants uh, XLPE, and he, he tells them what the benefits are. And then that particular utility, when he orders, he asks the manufacturer, what about three retardants? So there is a better dialogue than when he is not informed about the, all these uh, uh, advantages of new material developments. But, and now I come to my final recommendation, this implies that utilities should be well informed, not to say very well informed, about the advantages of copper in order to let them responsibly participate in this decision process. Just to repeat this last, if you ask the end user to, to um, debate with the cable manufacturer, then he must know on what basis. So he must know that there are certain advantages and then he can make his, his choice. Well, this is the final um, uh, slide of my brief presentation. And it is uh, the reference, I already said it, it's a very important uh, technical brochure for for sick advanced design of metal laminated coverings. I can recommend it. Probably uh, some of you already uh, know this brochure, but SIGRE stands for quality, but this is, this is an excellent uh, product. And a lot of information about the testing is um, summarized in this technical brochure. I didn't talk about the testing because I wanted to focus on the material choice, but the testing of these laminates is important because it's a new design and you have to prove that it's uh, good for a long cable life and long is usually 
50 years. Well, thank you very much for listening to me. Uh, I hope um, you could follow me. And if you have questions, I will be pleased to hear and to answer them in this uh, webinar. Thank you very much.